yeah return on value method so in this uh, i am assuming the uh, depreciation rate as constant constant depreciation rate in straight line method depreciation amount will remains constant throughout the year whereas in return on value method depreciation percentage or depreciation rate remains constant so uh, let us assume the depreciation rate as 10 percent so in the same example my depreciation in the first year will be 10 percent of 100 10 percent of value of asset that is 10 rupees then remaining balance of the asset will be now 90 in second year my depreciation will be 10 percent same 10 percent of not 100 but 90 because value of asset has already been reduced to 90 so it will be 9 now the asset value residual value is 81 90 minus 9 81 now in the third year depreciation will be 10 percent of 81 8.1 so on so in return on value method the depreciation percentage rate of depreciation will be assumed as constant and that percentage of value of an asset declined value of an asset will be charged as depreciation that is why return on value that is that percentage will be applied on not the original value of the asset but depreciated value of asset at each year clear disadvantage of return on value method is asset value never becomes zero that is the depreciation amount continues asset value will never become zero whereas in straight line method asset value becomes zero at one point of time advantage of this return on value method is this method is recognized as per income tax act and companies act both the acts have been recognized this type of method that is for calculating depreciation then coming to last sum of years digits method here it is only uh, we'll calculate the percentage what we assumed in the 10 percent that percentage varies now how to calculate that rate of depreciation percentages see assume if life of year uh, asset is three years then write numbers in reverse order 3 plus 2 plus 1 that is total 6 so in first year the depreciation amount will be 3 divided by this total 6 into that value that is 3 divided by 6 is 1 by 2 so half of value of an asset half of 100 so 50 will be the amount of depreciation in first year in second year it will be 2 divided by 6 into value of an asset that is 1 by 3 into value of an asset is 100 33.33 will be the depreciation amount in second year in third year 1 divided by 6 into this you know, 100 minus 83.33 what are the value similarly if the life of an asset is 5 years then in first year depreciation amount will be this is 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 15 so in first year depreciation will be 5 by 15 into value of an asset second year depreciation will be 4 by 15 into value of an asset so on so in exam what will get us they'll give the method like the straight line method or return on value method or a sum of years digit method and they'll give the value of an asset useful life all the data which require they'll ask depreciation say they'll give useful life of an asset as three years what is the amount of depreciation to be charged in second year so that way the question will be they'll be asking the amount of depreciation to be charged in a particular year clear Chalo. next topic the last topic of module a that is forex that is foreign exchange arithmetic now what is forex what is foreign exchange foreign currency uh, that is uh, foreign currency in terms of home currency is nothing but foreign exchange that is one dollar is equals to rupee or rupee in terms of dollar or dollar in terms of euro anything uh, expression of one currency into another currency which is a foreign currency clear day to day we require we deal in foreign currencies we sell foreign currency to the customers as a banker and we purchase we also purchase foreign currency from the customer depending on the requirement so uh, what are the basic calculations involved in forex arithmetic uh, in foreign exchange will be dealt in this topic 
first thing in forex arithmetic is uh, like um, quoting uh, we have two types of quotes one is direct quote and is indirect quote what is direct quote is one unit of foreign currency expressed in terms of home currency that is one dollar is equals to rupees 60 one unit of foreign currency expressed in terms of home currency is direct quote whereas one unit of home currency expressed in terms of foreign currency is indirect quote see one dollar is equals to rupee 60 is direct quote in india that is in india home currency is rupee so one unit of foreign currency in terms of home currency is direct quote in india whereas the same thing one dollar is equals to rupee 60 will be indirect quote in us clear